We are one week into 2024 fall camp for your national champion, Michigan Wolverines. Got some quarterback updates, right? Found out about an injury that uh, we didn't really know about and uh, some players emerging. Maybe a little spring all-star is kind of re-emerging in this quarterback battle. That's the thing I'm going to really talk about on today's Michigan football report. So you're going to want to watch today's entire show. Deal for you, though. Uh, we're back in uh, silly season, right? It's football season in 25 days from now. 25 days till Michigan football plays. And I want to make sure you guys are getting your extra juice of James Yoder and Michigan football all over the internet. So if you haven't yet, follow me on Twitter, a.k.a. AKA X. Uh, first 10 people will follow me after this video. I will follow you back. Now, if you've already followed me, say, that's not fair, James. You never followed me back. I follow you already. Um, send me a DM to say, follow me back. And if you're one of the first 10 of those, uh, I will follow you back. So it's kind of like it's not like you're getting screwed like you've got a cell phone plan not getting the good deals you're still getting the good deals call i got producer calling jack called in something i don't even know where's jack's at today calling producer calling aka moose on the ones and twos it is the michigan football report by chat sports coming up right now All right, we will talk the quarterback situation in a second, but I did want to kind of talk about uh, this guy and some of the national media speculating and coming to the defense of Jim Harbaugh mostly and a little bit of Michigan football. Colin Coward, you know, you like him, you don't like him. He's one of the all-time greats. He's on the Mount Rushmore of sports uh, analysts, journalists, personalities, whatever you want. Uh, he had some things to say on Jim Harbaugh today. I'll tell you about that in a second. Make sure you guys, if you haven't yet, subscribe. We've just been crushing. It's our second video. Uh, this our third video now. We've had two videos a couple Fridays ago. Yesterday and Monday, I told you we're back into daily video season. Uh, like 79 subscribers and like 46 subscribers. Uh, if you get more than 20 or 25 subscribers in any video, you are doing really well on YouTube unless you're Mr. B. So hit that subscribe uh, button right below it. Share the link with your friends, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Colin Cowherd says, this is a witch hunt, right? Quote from Cowherd, there is nothing in this ruling Nothing that proves Harbaugh knew any of it. We showed you guys the quote yesterday from Harbaugh. Coward, nothing that shows uh, Harbaugh proved any of it. Nonsense. So Coward coming out strong against uh, you know the NCAA, backing up Michigan, showing uh, the world and his audience that the Michigan football program, Jim Harbaugh, it's a witch hunt. Like I said yesterday, and by the way, I want to just address this, Colin. I did the Trump-Harbaugh comparison. Some people try to say in the comments, Yoder, are you supporting Trump? Are you, are you comparing Jim Harbaugh to, he's a Trump? I, I'm not going to tell you I'm supporting for president, okay? You make your own decision. If you don't know I'm supporting, you probably don't watch enough of the show. Um, this. I didn't say Jim Harbaugh is the equivalent, is the same politics as Donald Trump. I said they are disruptors in their field, okay? They come in, they try to change the rules, they want to you know, take shots at the establishment, and they are treated the same way by their enemies, by the NCAA deep state, and of course, by the media. So it was an analysis of how they are treated and how their kind of careers parallel President of the United States, you know, the Michigan football coach, and where they've gone from there. So you guys need to chill out with the politics politics, you sons of guns down there in the comments. So Coward says this is a witch hunt. I will say this yesterday. I spent eight, ten minutes talking about yesterday's show. This is a witch hunt. I said that no short of 35 times. Coward comes out today. I saw YouTube gives us this full list. I don't know if you knew this, Colin. A full list of everyone who views the show. So I saw the uh, the, the thousands and thousands of people. Uh, viewer were like number 3,265. It was Colin Cowherd. It was C. Cowherd. And then it was The Herd. All watches. So three views from Cowherd yesterday. Thank you so much uh, for being a uh, for, uh, being a J-Ader, being a member of the Michigan Football Report community, and kind of stealing my shtick by saying the word witch hunt in regards to to Michigan football. So let's keep things rolling here on the Michigan football report. Colin Cowherd is defending Michigan. Somebody else in the you know, national media defended Michigan and why the NCAA may have leaked this too, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But guys, we're 25 days away, right? 25 days away from Michigan playing Fresno State, 7.30 p.m., under the lights at the big house to get this this season kicked off, defending national champions. I want to know what you guys are feeling. You probably don't know much about Fresno State. Coached by Jeff Tedford, the former Cal coach, but 9-4 last year, so this is no slouch of a team. We don't know what the quarterback situation is at Michigan. We'll find out a little bit here in a second. Let me know your score predictions. Give me your score comment predictions down in the comments. Josh Pate, uh, who I think does a really good job. Uh, you know, he's a competitor. I don't know if he's really like, compete with him. He does national stuff on college football, CBS Sports, 24-7 Sports. He said today, based on intuition and sources, 
that this NCA notice of allegations leak that came out to ESPN on Sunday was leaked because of the Connor Stallions Netflix doc. They're trying to get ahead of what Stallions is going to say. Maybe he didn't talk to the NCA because he wanted to make some money off it. I don't blame him. Right? He got fired from his job. It was kind of toxic out there in the football world right now. This documentary comes out three weeks from today. Stallions is the guy. It's his entire side of the story. And uh, I actually can't wait to watch it, but I think Pate had some good points here. He says, the NCA has a lot of motivation motivation for look for leaking this it's 100 percent tied to that documentary 24 7 sports josh pay i think it's one of the best in the game on this ncaa league so you got uh colin coward you got josh pay you got Paul Feinbaum was even defending Jim Harbaugh yesterday. The only people who are kind of not defending Jim Harbaugh are that schmuck Dan Dockage uh, outkick. And then Stephen A. Smith seems to have kind of a hard-on for sticking to Michigan over the years. Uh, but other than that, anyone with a reasonable brain seems to be coming and saying, look, Harbaugh's gone. It's kind of a nothing burger. You got guys driving Lamborghinis, Ferraris, thousands of dollars in cash. Why are you worried about cheeseburgers? Why are you worrying about maybe getting a slight advantage through uh, you know, what they claim Connor Steins did? If he did anything, I'm not sure. Next up up guys we have some major developments major developments on the michigan football qb1 battle who's going to come in and uh you know take over for jj mccarthy the greatest quarterback in the history of the big 10 but i did want to tell you that today's show is sponsored by game time i love using the game time app recently about a month ago a little less than a month ago three weeks i used the game time app to get last minute tickets to the mlb home run derby and the major league baseball all-star game back-to-back nights you might have seen those photos on on my Twitter slash X account. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, so it makes tickets, getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch or the first snap. Michigan football 25 days away, and with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, you're gonna wanna use Game Time because they take the guesswork out of buying tickets to events. Michigan football is right around the corner. I love game time, like I mentioned. Last-minute deals, all-in pricing. And, Colin, I don't know if you've ever had this happen. I had this happen at the World Series. I bought a single ticket just to go because I want to go to World Series. Nobody wanted to go with me. And I thought it was a good seat. I kind of had a partial uh, partial block view because I used one of the competitors. Right? I actually bought it straight from the Rangers themselves. Game time shows you your seat, and it's awesome. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app now. Create an account and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Quarterback battle. I love it, baby. Actually, I, maybe I don't, right? It worked out in 2021. I'm not sure if it worked out back in like 2015, 16, or 2016, 17. Wilton Spate, maybe, but um, I don't know, 2017, that whole quarterback thing. Uh, Shea Patterson then came in. 2020 it really stunk, right? Uh, that team stunk uh, with the quarterback battle to start that year. Jack Tuttle working through something, right? We now remember last season, he had two different surgeries. Uh, End of the season then, and then, you know, off season that kept him out of spring ball. Shoulder and his elbow. And apparently he tweaked it over the last few days, has missed parts of multiple practices, and they're expecting him back, expecting him back soon, um, back to 100% time a little bit soon. But he missed spring practice, right, with off-season surgery. So you didn't really get to see what the seventh-year uh, quarterback who uh, went to Utah, went to Indiana, now is at Michigan, 25 years old, a little old. A lot of people go to college for seven years, Cullen. Some, they call him doctors. They also call him Jack Tuttle, right, that national champion, uh, backup, soon-to-be national championship, maybe starting quarterback sources say he is expected to be back to 100 percent soon but i do put you know sometime soon in those single quotes because we really don't know if that means in a couple days or in a week or two if it's a week or two i think you can kind of back him out didn't go to spring ball missing big time which i don't know if it's going to happen in fall camp Who's been getting the reps? Names you, you're familiar, right? Alex Orgy is the expected starter, right? Uh, everyone's expecting him to start him or, or Tuttle at this point. Most people still think it's going to be Orgy. I think it's going to be Tuttle, but not with this injury thing. But Davis Warren has been coming on. Um, certainly played, uh, played great in the spring game. What's the problem with Orgy? He's got the body, right? He's uh, 6'3", 225 pounds. Um you know, played some great plays over the last couple of years. He just struggles with passing concepts. He's not a great passer. I talked to somebody in Dallas that covered him in high school, a bunch of games. Like, that dude's the quarterback in Michigan. He can't throw worth beep shit. Um, and that's kind of why he is not the submitted 
starter at this point. Come out a little bit better, but still struggling with passing concepts. Davis Warren. Keep an eye for Davis Warren. We'll talk about him in a second. Quick update on yesterday's ask. I told you we're trying to beat our goal for this month is to beat last year's likes at 6,268 likes last year in our videos, and we're trying to get to 6,269. Nice. Uh, Producer Colin, a.k.a. Moose. Got 396 in yesterday's video. Huge, huge start. That's a lot of likes for a video that hasn't got like, a massive audience or anything just yet. So, Thanks for the great start yesterday. Like today's video. Davis Warren, the red shirt junior. He's actually fifth year out of high school because he actually set out a year in 2020. COVID year, he had a medical condition come out of high school. Was like a four-star quarterback. Ended up having to walk on to Michigan because of a medical injury, but was cleared. He was the best quarterback in the 2024 spring game. Hands down, no one can argue that. Uh, Tuttle didn't perform. Orgy, kind of like what we saw, um, you know, what we expect from him. He hasn't thrown very well. Don't count out. All right? Do not count out Davis Warren. Tuttle banged up. Orgy's passing struggles. Could he emerge a quarterback one? It's doubtful. It is doubtful. But what he is getting, what everyone in life needs to prove themselves, he is getting opportunity with Jack Tuttle uh, sideline and you know just kind of based on the performance that he had in this spring game. I don't think... Whoever starts, you know, no matter games one or two, right? Whoever starts those games, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what they do. The battle is going to continue in the third, and hopefully by the fourth game, they know who the real starter is. All these guys, I think, Davis Warren, Jack Tuttle, Alex Orgy, are going to get meaningful game time reps with the ones. The Texas game could be the uh, could be the exception if someone comes in Tuttle and he's doing good, he's hot, or Orgy is playing good. They're not going to take him out. But unless someone has a Heisman like performance, right, where you know Alex Orgy is two touch passing touch touchdowns and 160 yards and you know 200 yards rushing and a couple touchdowns whatever happens this is going to go into at least the third game if not the fourth game of the year until Michigan finally figures out who their quarterback is for the remainder of the season and if it's not Orgy I think he will because of his versatility much like JJ McCarthy in 2021 he'll get two or three um, you know drives per game or come in for a couple snaps here and there just to make sure that he is staying part of the game plan and giving the opportunity to take that job because of the immense upside that he has you know Ohio State fans Michigan State fans, they've been chirping me all over social media. They've been chirping us in the comments. But this is the greatest political slogan of all time. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Michigan has not lost to Ohio State in a decade, right? 2019, that's a whole different decade. Four straight seasons, three straight wins. Let's keep it rolling. You and me, comment Bosa on today's video. If we are going to do it again, five straight seasons, no loss to the Buckeyes. Four straight wins and do it again in Columbus. Do you know? Do you know, Colin, do you know, Moose, that Ohio State has not beat Michigan in their own stadium since 2018? Can you believe that? 2018. That's like, like there's kids that are in uh, high school that were born in 2018, probably. That's what it seems like to me. But uh, comment Bosa, you guys always do, but uh, let's slam the Bosa's as much as possible. I'm just going to make this clear. This team is going to frustrate you on offense. This team is going to be like some of those Rich Rodder, Brady Hoke teams that you're like, just throw the ball to the wide open fucking guy. Run the ball. It's like you got Donovan Edwards. You got Superstar. You got Colson Lovin. You're replacing all five starters in the offensive line. You've got under-talented quarterbacks. Let's just put it there. This is going to be a team that might win a game 10-7. to 7. That might win a game 13-10 to 10, where their only touchdown is a pick six or a fumble recovery. This team will frustrate you. What we need to hope to is you get quarterback play at or above the worst Kate McNamara put in in 2021, and this can be a national championship. And that can be. You know, I'm saying they will be. I said 15-0 and 0, uh, last year. We're going 16-0 this year. That's what I'm uh, claiming to you. But it's not going to come without its frustrations. Bruce Feldman released his annual freaks list. I don't think Feldman. I think he's kind of a schmuck, but uh, nevertheless, he does a good job as a journalist. And he's on TV sometimes. He's got scoops here or there. Four Michigan players in the top 100 on his freaks, but I've got a gripe with you, Bruce. I have got a gripe. I'm going to tell you about that here. Just a reminder quickly, first 10 people after this video is published to follow me on Twitter slash X at James Yoder. Link is down in the comments. Link is in the description of today's video. Give me a follow. If you've already followed, of course, just hit me in the DMs. Just say, follow me, you SOB, and I'll follow you back if you're one of the first 10. Bruce Feldman's 2024 freaks list. Uh, Nicholas Harbor, right? You guys remember him, like the defensive end, wide receiver. Michigan was in on him for you know a year and a half and ultimately went to South Carolina. He's number one for the second year in a row. Um, Kenneth Grant. Number three, we all saw Kenneth Grant against Penn State. We all saw Kenneth Grant all year. He's a freak. I have a source at the very top level of the NFL, the very top level of the NFL. I'm talking about a guy who hires NFL coaches, a guy who makes draft picks, and he told me 
look, all this hype, all these other guys, Mason Graham, you know, et cetera, et cetera, Will Johnson. He's like, not saying it's going to happen, but Kenneth Grant is a sleeper. Could come out of nowhere be the number one pick in the NFL draft next year. Just keep an eye out for Kenneth Grant. Keep an eye for Alex Orgy, not surprising, at 16. Will Johnson, number 28, uh, maybe a little bit surprising. And then Martin, Marlon Klein, right, uh, second string tight end. Most people don't probably even know who he is. Uh, that are the four Michigan players on the list. Only one Ohio State player in the top 10. So Michigan with one top and Ohio State with one in the top 10. Now let's look, take a look back the last few years. Uh, Feldman's been doing this for a number of years. Chris Jenkins was number six. And, and Feldman's got a pretty good record, at least with Michigan guys, right? Jenkins, number six in the 2023 list, had an All-American level year. Boom. High NFL draft pick. I think it was second round. Could have been the second round of the, the Bengals, I'm pretty sure. Going back a year prior to that, Mozzie Smith, number one in the 2022 list, first round pick of the Dallas Cowboys. Pretty good omens there for Kenneth Grant, if you kind of follow the pattern here. A year prior to that, 2021, Aiden Hutchinson, he wasn't a superstar coming in 2021. He was a second team ish Big Ten player that we weren't sure we were going to get out of as a senior. Number two in the list, number two for the Heisman, number two draft pick, NFL superstar. Pretty damn good track record. Year prior to that, nobody was calling Quiddy Pay a first round draft pick. Feldman had him number one on the 2020 list, okay? 2020 list. Pay played that 2020 season, the short COVID shortened one. Boom. Top 15, maybe even top 10. I think it was maybe number nine pick of the Indianapolis Colts. We continue rolling on. Rashawn Gary, number one recruit in 2016, number one on this list in 2018. So 2018, 2020, and 2022. So three times in five years, right? Not 2021, not 20, yeah, 2005 years. Michigan had the number one guy from 18 through 22, which is kind of crazy. Rashawn Gary, top 15 pick. My memory serves me right. 13th pick the Packers. I could be wrong on that. But I'm going to ask you this, Bruce. You serious here, pal? How is the Don not a freak? How is Donovan Edwards, big game Don, uh, the man who is probably four or five of the most memorable plays in the history of the Michigan football program, how is he not a freak? I don't, is it, what's it based on? Because I read a bunch of the other receivers and running backs and quarterbacks and defensive backs. What are you looking for out here? I think a guy who can do this as a true freshman, throw a 75-yard pass, 45 in the air, in perfect stride while getting absolutely smoked in the face. Should have been a penalty against Iowa as a true freshman. Big 10 championship game. Michigan roll from there. He's got more, by the way. Do you know this, uh, this Moose? He has more touchdown passes in the Big 10 championship game than number two pick Colbert Stroud of the Houston Texans. Okay? That's the Don. Freak? How about this? Just a few weeks prior to that. Against Maryland, 10 catches, 177 yards, 170 yards, including this 77 yard touchdown reception as a true freshman, set the record for most receiving yards by a Michigan running back in a single game. Fast forward a year, 75 yards, 85 yards. The Don in the final eight minutes of the game, right, had those two massive runs. Absolutely went on a tear between the Ohio State game the uh, and, and then the Big Ten Championship game. Absolute tear. Did, did okay in the TCU game in there. That is the Don. Fast forward to this year against Ohio State. Do we forget about this pass? I think people forget about it. Had a 34-yard pass from Michigan's own side of the field, right? The Michigan 46, right? Had him reach half you know, for midfield at that point. One, one score game, Sharon Moore had the balls, one of the great big ball plays in history to call it up. Boom. Hits Colson Loveland down the field. 34-yard pass. The Don. Snubbed by Bruce Feldman. I think he should have been top five for sure. I don't know what Bruce Feldman's thinking. But also, by the way, Amarian Walker, right? Michigan wide receiver, was cornerback last year, didn't really play, transferred to Ole Miss, now transferred back to Michigan in one month. He was the top 15 on the list last year for Feldman. Not even in the top 100 this year. So some inconsistencies. I don't know how you snub the Don, the uh, the greatest big game player in the history of college football. Guys, thank you for making it to the end of today's video. We've gone longer with the last three videos, right? Like 24 minutes, 26 minutes. I don't know what today was. It's probably about 20 or so, 19 minutes. You know, usually we do about like 14, 15, 16. So thank you for watching to the end. I appreciate you. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know. The only way I can know, type real one that you were a real one. Made it to the end of the video. For producer Moose. Give me a Moose. Moose, 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 Moose. Type Moose too. Show the man some love. Feeling in for Jack. I am your host, James Yoder. I'll see you guys next time. Go Blue.